I'd like to call the order of the building committee meeting. Um, first uh, item on the agenda is approval of March 3rd meeting minutes. So moved. Point of order, do we need to add one member? Oh. You have to uh, appoint somebody, one of, either Sarah or Ms. Hall. I'd like to appoint Matt Pappas for our building committee so we have a full quorum here. Okay. All right, so back to uh, the approval of March 3rd. Building committee minutes. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, next is facilities update. Mr. Cotty. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. How are you? <clears throat> so I'll start with the custodial update, as I usually do. And uh, I, the custodians were holding our ground. Uh, in terms of personnel, we, uh, you saw we added in the personnel committee, we added a custodian. I'm very, very happy to report we're hopefully adding two more uh, at your next meeting. So we've got, we've got applications coming in. Uh, what seemed to turn the tide on that was putting it up on the marquees in front of McClellan School so all the Brock Street traffic can see the request. And out here in front of Spalding, there's a lot of traffic along Wakefield Street that sees we're, we're looking to hire people and it's finally getting some traction. The custodians have been engaged in uh, spring cleanup outside of the buildings, getting the, getting the winter debris taken care of. And uh, the grounds crew has also been engaged in uh, spring cleanup of the parking lots and sweeping, all that sort of thing. The sports fields opened, uh, they're all open now. It, it's about two weeks ahead of our historic norm. So that, that's really great work out of the grounds crew. And we had a little bit of field training just recently on our new Sand Pro. Uh, field grooming equipment that we purchased last winter, and that piece of equipment certainly helped in having the fields open a little bit earlier. It's uh, definitely a labor-saving device, uh, doing some great work. We uh, installed a new scoreboard on the uh, softball field. On the left, you could see the old scoreboard, and I don't know if you can tell where it says ball. That uh, they said the letters are a little distorted because a tree fell on it and landed there, and. Uh, this was an old LED, uh, regular incandescent light bulb system. The new one on the right is all LED and uh, looks great and it's fully functional and ready to start working. I mentioned we were sweeping parking lots. We in the, historically have been reliant on borrowing equipment from the city to sweep up our parking lots. We did find buried out in the barn is, was an old uh, broom attachment for the Kubota that we have not used since I've been around since most of the crew here has been around, and we were able to get that out, get it cleaned up, get it working, and it works great. We used it for the first time this season, and we are able to clean up the parking lots without being dependent on borrowing equipment from another department, so that's great. And that's all equipment that we had in-house. We just had to put it into service, so fit on the grounds people. The maintenance crew has been very busy. We started creating GIS maps of the rooftop equipment we're forever sending uh, contractors, or our own personnel, up onto a roof, and there is so much equipment up there, and there's so much convoluted nomenclature around what piece of equipment is what. We tell somebody to go work on ERU-1, and they don't know where it is, especially our subcontractors who aren't here all the time. So we're creating these maps to be able to just hand them to somebody and say, you know, this is the school, I want you at MUA-1, go fix it. And people will be able to find their way around up there. This is the McClellan School, and I grabbed this picture as an example of the roofs, not only because it shows the rooftop mapping that we're doing, but it tells a little bit of a, another story here. If you look at the paving, the parking lot on the left is all brand new pavement. The playground on the right is the old pavement. So this, pic, this picture not only shows, tells the story about the rooftop equipment, but it tells the story about where we've been with paving and where we, the work that we still have to do with paving. We've got some more of that coming up this summer. That particular playground lot is not on schedule for this summer, but uh, it was recently crack sealed and it should hold up for another year or so. Uh, a new tailgate lift is being installed in the rack truck. This was some CIP money from last cycle and we ordered it five months ago. So uh, finally arrived and uh, it's getting installed now. So terrific to see that coming in. Just want to put on your radar some masonry repairs. Um, you know, Rochester used to be the home of, uh, of the Kane Gonick Brickyard, and we have a lot of brick buildings in Rochester. And we can see here at the Gonick building, there's some masonry failures. The picture on the left 
You can see the bricks in the bottom, the, you can see the grout or, or the, the, the mortar in between the bricks. As you move up just below the section of granite, you see it looks black. It's black because there's no more mortar in there. It's all failed and gone away. Picture on the right, you can see some loose brick down at the bottom. The next picture in the back of Gonic, you can see in the old building, there's a concrete apron that runs all the way around the building. It becomes a splash block for water coming off the roof. And that water splashes back up into the masonry. You can see the discoloration from the rain. So part of the, just the proper maintenance cycle for a masonry building is to keep the mortar joints all in repair and then to waterproof it. Um, this building hasn't been waterproofed ever in my knowledge. We just started pushing that direction. We've, we completed uh, waterproofing at the middle school and uh, this will be the next one on target. So I just wanted to put some of this masonry work on your radar because you're going to hear me talking more about that over the next couple of months. Air quality improvement project. Uh, Spalding High School is about 50% done, and we're starting to move into the Maple Street Magnet School. The timing of this project is uh, fortuitous. We knew the Honeywell stuff was aging out of its life expectancy. It was still functioning when we started kicking this product off. It seems like the equipment knows it's getting replaced because it's starting to, uh, to nosedive. We're having all kinds of uh, software problems with the Honeywell stuff as controllers are just losing their identity for no reason and it's becoming a daily occurrence. So fortunately we're on the right path to get all of that replaced and keep all of that equipment functioning. Spalding High School Field Storage Building. This is the locus where the new building will go. Um, doesn't look like much but we have been working on this. There's a couple of surveyors in that picture and they're staking out the location for the footings. The uh, porta potty has been put in place and the truss submittal process, we completed that today, so we're able to start ordering the new trusses for that will hold up the roof of the new building, and that's a kind of a milestone getting through the submittal process. So i got a nice spot where I know I can stand in the same place and just keep taking a picture from here, and we'll show you this same scene as the building progresses. So the next step on that project is, uh, I believe the 16th, we're going to remove some of these trees that are in the way, and we should be breaking ground on April 18th on that project. Spalding High School Auditorium update. Let's see how I get you guys in. up to speed on what's been going on there. The stage itself is, has been completely rebuilt. Um, the picture on the left shows the layout of the plywood. That's kind of interesting the way it's laid out. This is something we learned by reaching out to UNH and reaching out to the Rochester Opera House. That is not how you would lay out plywood for a floor in your house or anywhere except for on a stage. And it's laid out in a, um, to help with blocking. Blocking is how set people think about where pieces of scenery go on the stage. And when actors are on the stage, they know I have to move across the room and do my next scene here and then move back. And they're kind of always aware of their position on the stage. And the plywood is laid out with little gaps between it, one dime thickness, so that people can tell where they are up and down stage and from stage right to stage left. So, kind of interesting. The new stairs that we just replaced, we got to replace it again because when we put a new surface on the, on the uh, stage, it changed by a quarter of an inch. And you don't think that's much, but if you've ever been going up a set of stairs and one step is different by a quarter of an inch, that's the one you trip on. And I just keep picturing a bunch of kids singing and dancing up there, and every play, somebody falls down because one of the steps was wrong. <laughs> we weren't going to have that. So uh, I see is that a... that something you discovered, or is that something the fire department came in? And... That's something we discovered. Mr. Letourneau uh, brought that to our attention. Because they've been going around town. Oh, well, yeah, we've... Educating uh, everybody about a quarter round. <laughs> De Deputy Chief Hughes has done inspections, I think, at all of our schools at this point. <laughs> and our stairs are in pretty good shape. Um, so uh, the next step for this is we're going to get painting done. That'll start next week. After the painting, we're going to bring the rigging back in, and that's scheduled for the week after. And after that, we'll replace the fire suppression. We still don't have the equipment in hand to rebuild the fire suppression system, so I can't give you a complete opening date. But we do have occupancy on the space. We're allowed to go in there and do stuff. We just have no theatrical capacity in the space. So far, and this number is pretty close to what the final number is going to be, uh, the cost of this project was $142,204.04. The cost to the district was 
the rest of it's covered by the insurance. So we uh, thank God for insurance. Work orders for the period of March 4th to uh, April 7th, we completed 126 work orders. It's down slightly from 136 the period before. Created 121 new work orders, up slightly from 98 in the period before. We now have a close ratio of 1.04 to 1, and now open 117 work orders, which is about the same as it was last month. So we're in good shape on work orders. And that's all I have for a facilities update. Dave? Do we fertilize our own fields? Uh, no, Urban Tree, we have a uh, fertilizer contract with Urban Tree. As part of the uh, federal MS war permitting, we don't want to store fertilizer. There's just so much involved with that. We don't want to do that. So that's contracted out, and we, uh, we have a spring, or we have an early spring and a late spring application. The early spring application has been scheduled. We worked through with Director Hebert on when we're going to be using the fields because we put it down. I think it's this weekend um, that we're going to be fertilizing the fields, and we have to stay off them until uh, it gives it like 48 hours for that to and work its way into the ground. Is that, that is it's all contracted contract. out, yes. Okay. Yep. Just a compliment to your staff. Uh, I know some of my students at Aroostra River played Spalding on Tuesday night, um, and everyone raved about this, the field. I was like, if you had only seen it a year or two ago, and, um, but everyone said it was phenomenal to play on. So thank you. to you and your staff. Thank you. That's great to hear. Mm -hmm. Ms. Keynes? Yeah. What are those? Intercom stuff too. That's we'll, we'll get to that. That's later on the agenda. Ladder, we'll get to that further down the agenda. That's oh, okay. on and on. Right. <coughs> Coming. Stay could tuned. You, could you just remind me one more time um, what the air quality improvement? So this, is? yes, ma'am. This is um, this is for the different rounds of you know for la the general word is uh, the COVID money, right? It's federal funding to provide relief to elementary and secondary schools. Came in three rounds. The second round of that grant money was largely targeted to replace failing infrastructure in the district that had to do with ventilation. So it's a lot of our HVAC controls that bring in fresh air and turn fans on and off. And this is replacing what the Honeywell system that we had in service for many years that's kind of aging out. So, so is this every facility? Uh, yes, except for East Rochester had new controls in it already, so we didn't want to touch that. And sections of the tech center, as well as a few sections at the middle school already had upgraded controls. I wasn't going to tear okay. that stuff out. That'll still be Honeywell controls in those locations, okay. but it's newer brand. We have... So that that COVID-19 money is covering yes. all of this? Yes. There was, um, we had in a bonded CIP line, I think, $340,000 that was, had already been put into budget for controls before we went after the federal money, and the federal grants are stipulated that if you've already budgeted, you need to spend that money as well. So there's a portion of it that's local tax dollars that we were planning from even before COVID. We knew we were heading in that direction. Okay. That seems to be the, the name of the game is air quality. Not, I mean, nobody's wearing masks or any of that other stuff. And so yes. So air quality seems to be... Thank you. Mr. Clarence? I know you haven't mentioned it, so I'm sure that sprinkler systems, no punch list items left to do on the, the sprinkler installs that were done last year. We're, we're talking about the irrigation, irrigation. system. Yes. yes. We're, we're, we're turning the water on uh, tomorrow. The okay. city will come and open the gates. And then Monday, we're meeting Elks Landscaping is going to go with us head by head and go through it. Any of that work, at this point, there's no more punch list items from the original construction. That's all done. The system's been turned over and accepted, fully functioning. Every year, because of freeze-thaw, the ground movement, there's always adjustments and a few heads that need to be replaced. And there's also, um, as we continue to live and look at the irrigation system, there might be a few things that weren't captured in the original design enhancements that we might like to have, so we'll, we'll begin that discussion as well. Thank you. I'd also like to say that uh, I've noticed over the middle school at the field there, in uh, past years it's really come a long ways. Um, it's really, really come along. I saw them out there this week working on the baseball fields and really doing a great job at bringing that up, up to par for, for the children and everything. So 
It's Thank awesome. You. Awesome will, to see that. You know, not, not, not just the high school. So over there too. Anything else on the facilities update? All right, moving on. Uh, number three, Maple Street Magnet School Electric Service Upgrade Bid. Okay, so um, to remind people what this project is, we're we're putting in Maple Street Magnet School is supplied with a uh, electric service that is outdated. You know, most schools were built without any thought about air conditioning or ventilation or computers or projectors or any of the millions of demands that we have for electricity in the modern classroom that we didn't have when this school was laid out. So what we want to do is bring in a new service to the building with uh, three phase 600 amps of power. And on the site plan you can see there is a utility pole across Maple Street that will come to a new utility pole set at the corner of the parking that will go underground from that point to a new transformer pad right here and it will trench to go into where the existing service is and into the basement where we'll set up a new uh, service. We're refeeding everything in the building. It's just going to allow us to distribute that load a little bit better and to allow any room for growth that we might have in the future. So this was, uh, this is money that we have for existing budgets. We hired an engineer to put together a bid package and a design. We put it out to bid. At the walkthrough, we had two bidders came Progressive Electric and Nagum Electric. Uh, Progressive Electric did not meet the spec, unfortunately. They're not going to be able to do the project in the time frame that we were we required to have it done while school is shut down. So of the two bidders, Nagum Electric is really the only one that actually met the spec. Nagum, Nagum Electric is... Uh, Nagum Electric did all of the work when we built East Rochester School, and they do a lot of regular service work for us. So we've had a long and uh, beneficial relationship with Nagum, their trusted partner. Um, in the bonded CIP, line 21108 has a balance of $45,374.89. That line is titled Electric Infrastructure Upgrade. I also have another bonded CIP line. 22104 that has a balance of $200,000, also titled Electric uh, Infrastructure Upgrade. So I'm asking the board to approve hiring Negum Electric for $84,000 with uh, that money coming from those two bonded lines. We'll spend the first line down to zero and the balance coming from the second line. Do you know when you said that they couldn't do it in the time frame? Are you looking to do this over the summer? Yes. The, okay. Yes, yeah. So, Mr. Quinn? Uh, if there's no other question, I'll make a motion to uh, uh, award the bid to Negum Electric and use the two uh, identified CSP lines. Second. Motion and second. Any more discussion? Once again, my question is the same as always. Are they comfortable with lead time of the gear? Because that was absolutely <laughs> that was, um, part of part of the uh, part of what they're caring for a cost here is they're having the, the equipment built in the custom shop. Okay, that's which, that's the which added explains price there. the added cost. That's about double. And it's here. not necessarily custom equipment, but if you get it through the custom shop, you can get it now. So is this Eaton product then? I, don't th I, I would have to double check with Negum on it. I, I don't think in the spec we don't name equipment, we say, or equivalent, so I'm not sure what uh, particular product. I mean, it will all be UL listed, best right, approved, yeah, yeah. Uh, naturally. That, that, I will say, will cover the cost of why it's much more expensive. Uh, all, all the factories are probably the, they're a year out. The only thing I'm yeah. getting is through custom. So Remember, my, my tailgate was five months. Yeah. Try getting a switch gear. Are we trenching across Maple Street? Or? No, it's overhead. Um, it's overhead. And it's overhead drops. across to the to the new U pole. Then it goes underground once it hits our locus. And uh, interesting story when when getting uh, Eversource on board for this, they wanted a deed for the property. I told them I said we're the city. I don't have a deed. The book and page reference is book zero page zero. There's no deed. We're the city. We've been here forever. They said well you got to give me a deed. He said, well, I can't. we got to prove you own it. So said, well, I'm the school. Come on. Of course I own it. <laughs> so they wouldn't take no for an answer. So they sent their own people in researching a deed, and uh, they end up sending it to me, and there's some handwritten thing that talks about a grant from the king. 
And I'm not even sure they got the right one. <laughs> it might be Rochester, New York. <laughs> but it was good enough for them. They accepted it. It was a grant from the king, so we own that property. Um, and we're going to be able to build on it. File that for the king. Any more discussion? All right, we have a motion, uh, a second, to approve the electric service upgrade through Negum for 84000 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. All right, next item, intercoms for Maple Street Magnet School and Gonic. Okay, uh, Ms. Keynes was asking about the intercom. So um, <clears throat> we have uh, two antiquated, unreliable intercoms. Uh, one of them is at the Gonic School, the other is at Maple Street Magnet School. This equipment is, I, I was unable to nail down an exact date of manufacture on it, but it's in excess of 25 years old. Uh, these are the old switch banks, the, the real old fashioned type of intercoms. And intercoms, I'll remind you, are life safety equipment in these buildings. They're the first lifeline to communicate hazards to the rooms. So we were hoping to target uh, some operating money from this year, which means this project would need to be complete before July 1st. So we, we reached out to um, Telephone and Network Technologies, who is currently working in the district as the low bidder on a wireless expansion project at the middle school. Uh, so the, they get, came back with some pricing that they can do this, they can get the equipment, get it in place, in service before July 1st, build out in full. And to put in the new, it's, a, it's still Bogan is a manufacturer, but their newest product line is Nyquist. This is their IP addressable system. This is the, the, what they plan to be well into service well into the future. Uh, Gonic School would cost $17,746. Maple Street would cost $17,324. Maple Street is much smaller, but Maple Street needs a bit more wiring replacement than Gonic. Gonic, we're pretty much just doing the front end. At Maple Street, we're getting a little bit more into replacing wires that connect rooms to to, uh, to the intercom. So the total to the both schools, $35,070. I've been talking with Linda. We have this in operating budget. Um, it's a bit more than we would normally want to go out to a sealed advertised bid. If we do that, we're not going to make July 1. So I'm asking if we can hire network, uh, telephone and network technologies as an extension of they are a current low bidder on a, a, a wiring project at the middle school, perhaps the board would like to consider hiring to do this work as an extension of that low bid. To which I'll add the last time we bid out intercoms, we did uh, Chamberlain, William Allen, and School Street, and Telephone and Network Technologies was the low bidder on that project. So they have installed our last three intercoms. They were the low bidder the first time around. They are the current low bidder on something else, and I'm hoping we can approve this money to be spent from operating. Pat, what is our normal amount that we're supposed to buy? Do we have a policy on the bidding? Do you know what it is by chance? Fifteen thousand. It's a sealed 15, bid. Yeah. Yeah. Was the um, the equipment that they did in the previous schools, is it the same technology? Or it's actually, it the that equipment is a generation mm -hmm. behind Nyqu NyQuest. What we're putting in here is, is, is the is one ahead of what we put in the other one. What, what we put in the other three was Qualcomm, and Nyquist is going to have a little bit longer lifespan into the future. So instead of, I, I always value consistency to have the same intercom in all the schools and the same widget in every room. Um, but when I also have to consider life cycle costing and you know how long this will reach into the future, I think switching now to the Nyquist system is probably the right move. Okay. Mr. Mayor? Would this, I don't know, procedurally or whatever, would this be more appropriate as it listed as a change order or something to, to add that or change the scope of work as opposed to that to alleviate or a rebit? I, I, you know, because we, we do significantly, and it makes sense to do it. You got them here, get it done, and but to, you know, I mean, I don't that know. same policy does have the fact that emergency, right? If you don't have an intercom, you can't alert someone to an emergency, so you could then recommend to finance that, again, we're pushing this forward for finance approval, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that's at your disposal if you need to be. 
So currently, those two schools have no. They have unreliable income right now. They have spotty coverage. I'd rather, I guess, I don't know if it'd be appropriate to change the scope of work on the current bid to, you know, to, to add it that way. Well, to do a change or you need to be a change to a current project, right? Yeah, because the income project is not the overall. Can you tell us what, how spotty it is? I mean, if we're thinking this is an emergency issue, how spotty is, I mean, is it, is it just you can't, it's hard to hear? Is it just it's, goes out? It's hard to hear, and I, I get complaints regularly that certain rooms are out, and then the next day that room's back, and a different room is out. Um, so that all the switch contacts are failing. I can't, it's not like, you know, room A, B, and C are down today, because today A, B, and C might have been hard to talk to, and tomorrow it might be J, K, and L. And A, B, and C will work again. It's kind of a, just the whole infrastructure is aging out. And can I just ask one more? And so the reason that you can't go out to bid is because you want it done within a certain amount of time? Uh, we're, yes. If we want to spend this out of operating budget this year, um, then we would need to have that encumbered, not only encumbered, but expended and realized before July 1. I can't cross fiscal years. So if we go out to bid, it, become, it will impact the next fiscal year which I did, we don't have a CIP line to address it. So right now we know that there's some surplus in operating, and I'm hoping that this might be a project we could target with operating surplus. Can okay. you, you explain the reason why we're definitely looking at the Nyquist over the option two on here? Well, because, again, it, it has to do with the, um, the serviceability into the future. Nyquist is their their flagship product moving forward. This is the one they want to support. It's going to have the longest reach into the future. That's, you know, as, as new products come online, old products fall offline. So if we buy something that's a generation back, yeah. it's going to fall offline sooner than the newest iteration. Okay. But to be clear, it's the same family. It's the same. It's Bogan right. Electronics, yes. It's the specs. And correct me if I'm wrong, if, if if we decide to go to bid and it goes into the next, um, if we wait till, to get it into the budget, if it's not in this next current budget, we're looking at September 2024 to it, replace these. If we wanted to do it as a CIP item, yes, we're looking at the fall, not this current budget cycle, but the following budget cycle. I don't think this equipment's going to last that long. So what will happen is we'll get into the next budget cycle and this will be done as an emergency, because right. uh, it's going to shut down. The guts of the Gonic School one is bigger than that TV. It, the guts of the Gonic School one looks like the intercom when I was in elementary right, school, uh, and it's it looks like the one you remember as yeah. well. Um, I remember it's that. been around for a while. Like I said, I was unable to nail down the exact age of this equipment, but it's uh, it's got some age on it. So if we're dealing with life safety stuff, I mean. I, that, that um, does alarm me, especially, um, you know, working at school myself, if there's, a, if there's an emergency and you need to contact someone immediately, um, I, think, I think we should entertain the idea of, of replacing this sooner rather than later. Because um, if, we're, if we're dealing with the safety of children, I mean, this, this is very important. Especially if classrooms don't have telephones in every room, right? Mm -hmm. So this is their only link to a telephone and communication to the outside world unless someone has a cell phone candy and that's not likely in Ghana and Maple Street. Thank you. Um, I understand life safety and that concerns me as well. I, I just, can you explain the process to me that if you wrote the spec or said Write these specs up tomorrow morning. Why it wouldn't be back before July first? Because they need to order the equipment. If I if we write it up tomorrow morning, it won't get. I can get it bid out, and it doesn't come back to you till May. Right. And now I can't order the equipment till the middle of May after the full board meeting in May, which doesn't give me enough time now to order and receive still, the equipment. That could still be out of this year's budget. It wouldn't have to be out of next year's budget. It would have to be full. If we did it out of this year's budget, it would have to be fully expended. 
operating budget goes away July 1. Right now, if there's right, a special... I, I understand budgets are... No, okay, I'm sure you understand but I, don't, I do. <laughs> but I don't understand. If you, get, if you get the thing back and we accept the bid on June 24th, why that can't come out of this year's money? I don't understand that. The, the work will be done before. I know the work won't be done, but most of the work that we get out won't be done in the year that you, you vote on it. <laughs> Actually, the city finance department won't let me do any kind of encumbrances. That would be an encumbrance. Why so, don't you tell them to go pound sand? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think they have. I don't think they can control your budget operation like that. I don't think that's within the purview. It, there's. There's no way we can move something to pay for this year so that we have the money for There's nothing. I mean, normally you're a genius at that, so I'm assuming you've already thought about that. So there's no way that we could move something that we can't pay next year to now and so that we have the money for this? $35,000. Just curious. I will say, I, I, I looked through this line by line. Um, I mean, the cost of equipment is cost of equipment. This is top of the line, lasts us a while. Um, does this have video um, in a front to the front door? No, that's usually supported by, um, the, by a different platform we use for the, uh, the A phone system, provided yeah, our phone, video. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, this um, is communication back and forth to the, to the rooms. But looking through the line item things, I mean, it, it's, it's equipment and the labor is minimal for, for this size of a system going in. Um, I, I personally am comfortable with these prices. Um, I personally bid similar things out quite often. And I mean, yeah, we might be able to find something, save a few dollars, but I think it's going to be detrimental if we try to, to force that out and it's going to last us a lot longer. Uh, it's going to cost us a lot of time. Can, uh, I'll also add to that last time we bid them out, there's actually only two qualified vendors. There's two people that can do this. We're, but we're talking to one of them. If we say, let's put this out to bid, what we're going to do is get one more check price from, from the other guy. And last time, they were more expensive than this guy. But you know what I mean? It could it maybe save $30 yeah. on each one. You know what I mean? They're, they're going to come in. They're buying the same equipment. They have the same workforce. They're very similar companies. Um, yeah. So I, for what it's worth... Make a motion to move this to finance for the thirty-five thousand seventy dollars out of the operating budget for emergency replacement of the uh, intercom systems at Gonic and Maple Street. Second. Motion is second. Any more discussion? Sure. Kyle, what do you know what the bid policy is? Do you know what the the actual letters? Yeah. I don't know the top of my head. I can't find it. I was just curious. If I could look at it first. So. Sorry, I can't vote anyway, but I was just curious. Anything else? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All, any opposed? Okay. One negative. Motion passes. Okay. Next on the agenda, five-year plan. Anybody? Nope. Nothing uh, next. Okay. After that, public comment. Building, right? Yes. <laughs> I am Tabitha Davis, resident of Rochester. Um, tonight is actually really nice. Um, this is the first time I've actually heard about bidding. This is why I was here tonight. Um, from my understanding that there's a school that's going to be having a floor done and some electrical work done and a few other things done, different schools. Um, number one, I did not see in any meetings or any committee meetings or even agendas or anything about a floor getting done um, in East Rochester School, not sure where it was, if someone can let me know where the minutes are for that, how much it cost or anything, the bidding. Um, also, I try looking on the website. There's no bidding at all on there. We don't know who's done it, 
the public should have a right to know on who's doing the things in our schools. I looked everywhere. I can't find it. A few other people can't find it. Um, I was wondering if you guys can get the bidding onto the site so that we know how much is getting spent on the schools being repaired or anything like that. Thank you. All right, we'll close public comment. Is there anything under other? <clears throat> I, I have one other for you. Um, we've received a request uh, too recently. Just today, we received a request from the McClellan School, and they're hoping to turn off the blowers in the gym because they have the drama club is rehearsing and they're going to be doing shows in there, and the fans are loud. Very loud. Uh, we have an ongoing request from the middle school of the same thing the fan noise in the cafeteria. I'm not comfortable turning off any fans because I'm under a direct order of this board to maintain 24-7 ventilation. So I'm not allowing anyone to turn anything off. So I just wanted to put that out there under other. Perhaps we're feeling comfortable enough now that we could for, to accommodate a drama club or if you guys want to give me some parameter or tell me to stay the course till we're done with this year. Um, but right now I'm functioning under the directive Full ventilation, 24-7, don't turn anything off. That's the last order I got. That's the one I'm sticking with until someone gives me a different order. I, I, I will say I was I've been in the gym um, help, actually helping the drama club get ready for this play that's happening tomorrow night, Friday night. That fan is extremely loud. It's really loud. Um, and, and these kids with their middle school voices trying to project. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I do see this. It, 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 I believe it's an exhaust fan. It didn't look like it was a supply coming in. It's just it's one exhaust fan in the center coming out, and it's extremely loud. I, I would like to make a motion that we give uh, Mr. Toddy the ability to turn off a fan here and there when a specific need arises, and like in this case. Second for discussion. Okay. We've got a motion and a second. Anyone have any comments? So, uh, is there alternatives when we shut that off for the productions or whatnot? As far as opening doors, circulation wise, uh, I, so rush to manage, got an outbreak. I, you know, it's, we should still be having some sense of caution. And I, I, I understand the problem. And, but you know, and we're trying to be reasonable. So what is what is the reason? You know, circulating air. If we're going to be packing people in, unmasked, unrestricted, um, you know, with, with, for productions, do we have what's the least mitigation we can do? So, are, are they? Do you know how many? Do you have an idea of what you would turn? So if we give you the authority to turn it off, like what are you comfortable with? You know what I mean? Are they, are, if you turn the fan off, are people going to be able to be seated six feet apart? Are, do we do have an additional kind of ventilation? COVID's still around, and I mean, I heard there was an outbreak at the high school or whatever. There was a senior. I have no idea. But anyway, I, I guess... I would look back to you and say, I, I mean, we trust your judgment, but what would those parameters look like? I don't want to turn off a fan because it's loud and have it packed and have people be closer than six feet. You know what I mean? So if I, if I may, the, yeah. the, the, unfortunately, the, there's no great parameter because it's a function of outdoor air temperature. Right? I can remember years at, at the middle school for, uh, for, for uh, the, when you get the veterans in there, mm -hmm. And uh, you were used to pack that gym with bands and hunt every kid in the school district and every veteran in a 100-mile radius was in there. And I remember people were passing out because it got so hot in there. Yep. So sometimes uh, uh, it can get hot on Veterans Day. And uh, it depends if the sun is shining, the room might get hot quick. We can run the fan right up until the show and then turn it right back on afterwards. Uh, but then you're, you're right, you're packing people in together. At the middle school, the complaint is around lunch. So every time we put kids in the room is when we're going to turn the fan off to meet that requirement. So I, that's, I'm, I'm bringing it back to y'all. I can't give you, there isn't a great criteria because it changes every day and with every use. So to, 
to kind of repeat that, I guess I would caution making that decision because it's in there for the ventilation and he's saying when people are in there, I don't, it sounds to me as though he doesn't want to be the one to make that decision. You know what I mean? It's, it's for their safety. I don't know that. So opening doors was brought up and uh, you create a different safety hazard when you, when you violate the perimeter, that you no longer have a secure perimeter in your school and you've created a different problem that's also a safety hazard. Right, and, but I, and I'm thinking for the production at the middle school, yeah. for the production, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it could be, okay, you're going to have to have people at the doors, if you will, watching the doors, guard the doors, if you will. Um, the middle school is, the complaint at the middle school is the lunch. Well, it's at, or it's at McClellan School. For the so school there are two complaints. One is the McClellan School is the theater. There's the theater. Yeah. And there's an, yeah. the lunch is also at the middle school, so there's two questions. Of, of different examples of people requesting fans to be shut off that I've been denying up till this point. I know the after school program um, <laughs> the after school program at McClellan has been, you know, they've noticed this, it's stressful for them and the kids every afternoon for three hours. It's very loud, but it's a safety issue. Have you, is there a machine to check how loud it is? Do you get a decibel reading? I mean, I'm just curious, like, is there a way to say it's, I don't know, sorry. Is, is it running normally? And is there, is it not running abnormally? It's just how loud it is. No, it's, it's, it's not a theater. It's, it's not an auditorium. No thought was ever given to decibels and, and air movement. It's a gymnasium, pull and duty as a theater. What was McClellan's actual request? Did they say from the hours of 3 to 8 on this date? Was it specific or was it general? Like was it for the play production and that's it? The rest of this week and on Saturday, they have, a, they have rehearsals. They have many performances during the school day on Friday and again 7 p.m. Friday and Saturday night. Perhaps the board would want to say the rehearsals, a kid learning to project during rehearsal is probably a good thing. Mm -hmm. right. Be loud, be loud, yell during rehearsal because then when it comes to opening night, you're going to be a little more comfortable being loud. Um, so maybe we could just shut it off for the, for the performances, but that's really some guidance I'm looking to y'all for. I would consider the actual performances just for those two hours. I mean, it's not going to be more than an hour of play, right? Find out when they're... Well, and we can turn it off, where, you know, from curtain to curtain, right? right. Just yeah. not while people are mingling, coming in, right. and the second right. the last line is spoken, they come back on. We can manage that pretty easily. Right, for the performances. So you, just for the performance, not rehearsal. Exactly. Performances only with the, with the audience. Thank you. Why is this an issue now and not an issue three years ago, four years ago, eight years ago? It's middle school play. Uh, didn't the middle school play used to take place at the high school? Yep. Yeah, because the auditorium at the high school is down, we're, we're, shoehorning, we're shoehorning these plays into other spaces because we only have, as Mr. Papp has pointed out before, we have one production space that's shared by the entire district. So and we're under, because we're in, under COVID last well, couple of years ago now, then we voted that we're keeping the, the HVAC going well, all well, the time. That's what COVID's all about. That's what we don't wear masks anymore because we got HC and, and ventilation going on. And I, no, I don't understand. It's because the governor told us we can't. Pardon me? It's because the governor told us we can't. That's why well, we're the governor, you know, he doesn't go to the school, so I don't really care. <clears throat> Any more discussion? I'd be in favor of, of turning it off during the performances, but I think otherwise it should remain on. So I don't know if, would you entertain that, that change? Absolutely, absolutely. I think Is that's that probably, probably the best bet. I, I mean, in my opinion, during school hours or whatever, it's loud in there, I, I don't care. Mm -hmm. But I, it, under certain, I see it as under certain circumstances as example for the, this one. You know, for a performance to the public, you know, 
where these kids are really trying to put on their performance and don't want to be forgotten because nobody could hear them. But I just want to be clear, we're also leaving it up. So if he doesn't feel comfortable because it's too packed, we're going to support Mr. Toddy if he says I'm leaving it on. Yeah, I'll support So I just, you know what I mean? So Thank you. It sounds to me like if it's a small performance or whatever and you feel, you deem that it's okay, if it's a packed performance night and you deem it that I would, even if you're saying I would just feel more comfortable with it on, I would, I would hope that this board would support that decision. So... I just don't want you to leave here saying, oh, they said it could be turned off, so I'm going to turn it off. If you don't feel comfortable, I would assume that we would leave it up, that we would support that decision. Because if it's a packed house and you feel it should be on, I would hope that we would support that. I, I just wanted to make sure that was... Do we, do we all agree to that? Well, that's uh, kind of arbitrary, only the well, fact that... In, in, are you going to be at those performances personally? No, but I don't have people in the building. Right, yeah. so, so now it's a designee. Secondly, yeah. what's the occupancy space of that, and is it a percentage of that space? So you know, I can I tie a number speak to, to that a little bit. Um, the, the director found out that the capacity is about 800 people, I believe, for that gymnasium. She was saying she never gets more than a couple hundred in there. She's trying to figure out how many chairs to ask for, and she's like, I don't know, 300 for just in case. So we're not going to be anywhere near max capacity, she says, in all the history. Now, it could be a flu first year back after right. all this COVID. You never know. You know, we don't have a crystal ball. Um, but history tells us we probably shouldn't be near that type of capacity. So, um, I mean, I know Paul doesn't like to amend motions, but I'd be willing to amend my motion for to give Mr. Toddy discretion um, to be able to turn off the HVAC equipment for these performances to the public um, for, the, for the drama club um, with the discretion that there's too many people, I'm not comfortable, we need to put this back on. You second it? I'll second it. I'd support that. Is it just the performances, or if there's something else coming up? Just the performances. Case by case basis. So yeah, dealing with literally the, the drama performance. Yeah. 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 Because to me, that's one that's important. I mean, any everyday school stuff, there's... there's... Oh, any more discussion? Yeah. Only concern I have is now we have an employee who, if somebody's paying attention to our meetings, is going to say, well, the board said you can turn it off. And I think the message that we are also sending is we leave it to the discretion of the employee and we support them whatever they say on that case. Because you, you, you're just putting them in a battle in the middle of before a kid's performance. Well, I can't hear my kid. Well, there's so many people. So I think, that, you know, I know they're going to make the right call, what they feel, and I support them. But I, I hate putting an employee in a battle situation with some, you know, parent that is trying to record this thing and they can't hear it. And it's a messy situation. I just think we're going down the road of just leave it on. But that's all. Any more discussion? Okay, I, we got can I just I, I kind of agree with Mr. Bollier. I mean, if we want it on when the kids are there and then we're adding more people to the mix, I guess I'm just concerned. I, I kind of agree. I think it should kind of be left on. I mean, I'm fine with leaving it in the discretion, but... I mean, you, you want it on when the kids are there, but the kids are going to be there, and then you're adding a couple hundred other people. It, you know what I mean? It, I mean, give them microphones. There's got to be another way to get them to be able to project their voices. I don't know that taking the fans off is, is the right way to go either. I'm a little bit uncomfortable with it. I, again, it's not my committee on a vote, but... Any more discussion? Uh, I agree with Mr. Boy. I, I just think that you know if he's not there and somebody else is there and six parents come up is that is that who you respond to those six parents or do you say sorry you know I mean I I think that's a that's a tricky situation that puts you in or your staff in in a situation you don't really want to be in actually I actually I think um, that Mr. Pappas's solution was a better solution that 
that you could actually have set times to turn it on and turn it off. But when the performance was actually going on or versus time, but to me that makes more sense if you're going to do it at all. Otherwise, I think you have to leave them on. I just think this sends such a mixed message. Yeah. We've had 24 hour ventilation for two years plus now to keep everybody healthy. Mm -hmm. We've negated some of the other mitigations that we did in the first part of the, the COVID. This is one piece, and it, it just sends such a mixed message that the kids that are having a hard time at lunchtime that can't hear still have to continue putting up with this. The kids during the regular school day have to keep putting up with this. I understand the performance, and if I had a daughter singing, I probably would be fit to be tied that someone might not be able to hear her. But common sense should dictate you're in the middle of a bad pandemic, a bad bug, with variations still happening. And every time there's a group, large group occurrence, you get outbreaks. So we're just sort of saying, because I want to hear these kids sing, which I do, we're going to risk grandma or whoever else is at the performance with a health issue, um, we're going to risk it. And I just don't think that's a smart thing to do. Question like logic. Have we, had any, we haven't had any other concerts or productions since our mask lifting? Well, since the mask lifting, so, um, um, just this, this production has gone to the, um, the elementary schools. The, the Descendants has gone to the elementary schools to show a little snippet of the production. They've had chorus and band concerts at the middle school, but haven't had this situation. Anything else? Well, I just, I, I mean, I, I it, it, you know, I don't think we're going to shut them off for the, if it's from curtain to curtain or, you know, parameters of, I, I, I agree with everything that's been said. I, I do. I tr trust me. I do. I mean, the Rochester Manor has got an outbreak right now. Identified it. You know, they're on lockdown. Um, you know, so it's not that far down the road. I do feel, and, and we've heard from parents of how restricted, and we try to get the kids back to some normalcy, and and, and I get that. Is the Opera House twenty-four hour ventilation? I mean, you know, the high school kids are going to be on different. So I, I understand if we we kind of heard from everybody about Kyle. Do you have a recommendation, or do you want to stay out of this? <laughs> I mean, well, I, I, ultimately, I, we go to you. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess you know. Again, Mr. Tati was presented with the situation earlier today. Um, you all have have said, you know, again, the safety of our students is the most important thing. That's what you focused on all the time. There's always an exception, and everyone always wants the exception. Um, my recommendation would be it's unfortunate that it might be too loud, but it's for the safety of everyone involved. And until things are dramatically better, and far less outbreaks and different things, I think the solution that should be sought is how do we amplify the voices versus how do we take away, instead of taking away safety measures. So that's my recommendation. Where were you 15 minutes ago? All right, motion is second on the table. All those in favor? Aye. All those against? No. Aye. Motion fails. Sorry, Matt. Yeah. So is there um, microphones? I mean, we understand why you voted the way you did, though. We get it. Yeah, yeah. You got no, to I, and it's. You got to go home. <laughs> 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 Before the record, you, know, you tried and failed, so you can go home and have that conversation. That's all good. All right, anything else under other? All right. Is there a non public? Oh. Really? Oh goodness. Yes. <laughs> it's going to be a short performance, or do we have to put the air handlers on? <laughs> <laughs> That's up to you. He's going on for an hour now. Yeah, now. I move we go into non public under RSA 91A. 
Second. All those Aye. in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. 